Damn, they ain't got them fly Hello hello, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the 2023 SBS Gayo Dejan outfits. In this video I'm going to be talking about the red carpet and performance outfits. I'm going to comment on the outfits, I'll be giving them a rating from 1 to 10, and when it's a group, I'm going to be ranking the outfits. The video is really long because of how many groups performed, but if you are looking for a specific one, the video has chapters so you can skip to the parts you want to watch. So grab a snack, grab a drink, and let's get into the video. Disclaimer. I am a fashion enthusiast and I studied fashion design in university, however, fashion is subjective. What I might think it's pretty, someone else might hate it, and it's completely okay. This isn't meant to be taken too seriously and I'm only doing it for fun. I'm only talking about the outfits, not the people wearing them. My thoughts on the clothing are just that, on the clothing, so I hope no one misunderstands it. So many people attended the ceremony, and I can't possibly talk about every single person that was there, so forgive me if I didn't mention your faves. I also can't possibly extend on every single look because otherwise we would be here for hours, so I'm going to be short when it comes to talking about each one. But without further ado, let's begin. <laughs> First off, we have Niju. The girls wore these pretty black and white dresses. Some of them are pretty simple, with simple silhouettes and not much going on in them, but there's also a few that are more eye-catching because of the shiny fabric, the silhouette, or some rhinestone details. My personal favorite looks are these two. They are pretty simple but the silhouettes are nice, and most importantly the dresses were perfectly tailored to their bodies. The girls didn't wear a lot of accessories and their hairstyles were really simple, which I don't love. More jewelry, different hairstyles and hair accessories for each member would have made the looks way more intriguing. Although I have to say that I do love their shoes. The girls looked elegant and pretty, but as a whole the look was a bit disappointing. The girls have worn way better red carpet looks during the end of the year events, so I don't understand what happened here. 7 out of 10. Next, we have N-Mix. The girls wore these white looks, and the furry pieces, paired with the all-white color palette, and the puffer boots were giving major winter wonderland vibes. Each individual outfit is unique on its own, and it works perfect when all the girls come together, but I don't love the look as a whole. Some of the clothing pieces are really interesting on their own, and I like that the look isn't entirely white, but there's some cream and off-white pieces that add a dynamic touch to the look. My problem comes with the silhouette in some outfits. They aren't flattering at all, and it just looks like the girls threw on some rugs and called it a day. I completely get what they were going for, but the execution wasn't done right, which in turn made the end result look bad. The accessories were also non-existing, and I think that with a ton and a ton more the look could have gone from odd to campy, which would have been so interesting and unique. 5 out of 10. Next, we have Stacy. The girls wore these pretty pink dresses, and I like that there are two different shades of pink that blend quite nicely. Yoon, Suman, and Jay are wearing dresses in different pale shades of pink. Their dresses are made of satin fabrics, and they looked so pretty. On the other hand, Si Yoon, Se Yoon and Isa wore dresses in brighter shades of pink. They still looked gorgeous, but their looks have completely different vibe than the other three girls, and that's what I don't love about this look. The different shades of pink blend perfectly, and all the silhouettes are equally amazing, but the difference in fabrics makes for the satin dresses to feel and look way more elegant than the other three dresses. Aside that, the look is actually really good. I like the hair accessories, and the jewelry is simple but it worked perfectly with the look. 8 out of 10. Next, we have new jeans. Unlike their recent red carpet appearances, this time they went for dresses. The white and black color palette is classic and simple, but what makes the look interesting is the lace. All their dresses, except Danielle's, have lace fabrics. The laces in all of them are different, but Hyan, Huron and Hanny's are really similar. I personally love Minji's the most because the base of the dress is white but the lace is black, and that makes a nice contrast in the dress. Danielle's dress doesn't have lace in the black fabric, but at the hem of the dress has a teeny tiny white lace detail that blends with the white tulle, so although very small, there's still a lace detail on her look. 
New jeans always kill it with the accessories, and although this time they are simple, they still complement and elevate the look a lot. I also like the different hairstyles, and the black Mary Jane's shoes they wore were so pretty and matched the dresses perfectly. As a whole their look was simple but so pretty and perfect for the event. It was definitely a more subtle side of new jeans we don't usually see and I liked it a lot. 10 out of 10. Next, we have Cravity. Their looks are in black and white, and right out of the bat I have to say that I really like them. Some of the boys are wearing tweed and printed jackets, and just that is really nice, but they also paired them with interesting pieces like leather and shiny pants. Other boys are wearing what I think is the best outfits in this look, and they consist of these matching black jacket and pants combo that have some shiny details on the fabric. I love anything sparkly, and the boys just looked so good. In all the outfits the jackets are for sure the main element of the look since they are the most eye-catching piece, but that doesn't mean the rest of the elements in the look were boring. They all wore accessories, some more simple than others, but they still complemented each look. The overall look was really nice, and I like how their stylists did a twist on the classic suit. 10 out of 10. Next, we have From Us 9. The girls wore some pretty all-white dresses. Most of them had some rhinestone details in them or different fabrics that looked really nice. I personally love these two looks because the fabrics are sequins and you know I love anything sparkly. I'm also obsessed with her dress because of the big rhinestone bows on the dress. They are so cute, and they made a simple dress much more interesting. The only look I don't like is Sayram's. The silhouette of the dress is nice, but it looks like it wasn't properly tailored to her body. It would have looked much better if it fit her around the waist, that way the bow on the back wouldn't look so weird. The length of the dress also doesn't look good with the furry leg warmers. You either leave the length as it is and ditch the leg warmers, or you keep the leg warmers but make the dress shorter, because as it is it makes her look so short and it's not faltering at all. But aside I actually like all the dresses, I like the different hair with the hair accessories, and the jewelry was minimal but still nice for each look. This is a 9 out of 10 for me and solely because of Sayram's dress. Next, we have in Hypen, and once again we have a super boring look. The boys wore white jackets, white or black t-shirts underneath, black pants, and black shoes. I like the fact that the jackets are all different, and a look even has an interesting layering touch to it, but aside that there isn't anything else that I like. The boys look good, but everything is so freaking boring and uninteresting. There isn't a single memorable element in the look, and I don't get why their styling team keeps doing this for red carpets. If the jackets were in a sparkly fabric, if they had print, or even in they had some rhinestones in them, the whole look would have been much better. Accessories also help a look to go from simple to more interesting, but they didn't even try that. 5 out of 10. Next, we have Les Seraphim, and oh my freaking god, ever since I first saw this picture I loved every single thing about the look. The girls are wearing black dresses, and they are all plain in the fabric, no sparkles, no print, no anything, but what make them really interesting are the silhouettes. For starters I like that all of them are floor length since that just instantly makes the look more elegant, then we amazing asymmetric silhouettes and some of their dresses that just look so good. I'm completely obsessed with Sakura's stomach cut out, it looks so good and it gives her look a touch of sexiness. I also love Chaewon's asymmetric neckline so much, it's so flattering on her and paired with the huge slit on one side it just looked so good. The accessories could have been a bit more impactful, especially for the simpler dresses, but it's not that big of a deal. Of course, without a doubt, this is a 10 out of 10. Next, we have the boys, and once again, we have a boring look. They are all wearing black from head to toe, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but to make an all-black look interesting you need unique pieces, cool fabrics, and lots of accessories, and unfortunately this look had none of that. Some of their outfits had some white details, other had some velvet details, and some even had some sparkly details in them, but none of that was enough to salvage the look from being boring. The only things that I did genuinely like is Eric's asymmetric top underneath his jacket, and news heeled boots. Aside that everything was just so boring. 5 out of 10. Next, we have Espa. I have mixed feelings about this look because I like some aspects of it, but also completely hate others. 
The color palette is nice, but because there are only four members it feels a bit messy because only one person is wearing white and it stands out way too much, but in all the wrong ways. Now, onto the dresses themselves. I like Giselle's dress a lot. It covered most of her body on the front, but it had a cutout on the back that was really nice. The only thing that I don't like is that the dress is wrinkly, like somebody ironed that dress for God's sake. Winter's dress is bad in my opinion. I absolutely hate it. I hate the silhouette because it does nothing for her, I hate how it's simple until the hip area where those awful ruffles began, I absolutely despise that ugly ass black belt, and the length of the dress is way too long for her height. Whoever styled her really hated her because this isn't it. I like Ning Ning's dress because of the silhouette, but it's way too simple and it looks like it's made from a stretchy cotton fabric, which in turn makes it look cheap. I also don't like the open toe heels she's wearing, but as a whole her look isn't awful. Karina's dress is complicated for me because I love the color and the silhouette. I don't mind the sheerness, but I don't love how they paired it with black pieces underneath for more coverage. Nude pieces would have looked nice so that way she's still covered but there's nothing to see underneath the dress, but I get that it would give the illusion that she's naked and she might not be comfortable with that, but even red pieces underneath would have been better than black. I honestly don't know what happened with Espa's styling team because this look was a bit messy and just bad. 6 out of 10. Next, we have Boy Next Door. I like the Christmas vibe dinner this look has, since it was obviously perfect for the event and it just looked so good. I love the sweaters some of the members wore, especially the furry one. The vest and white shirt combo was also nice, and I love the brown jacket with black piping. On the bottom half of their looks they all wore trousers, but their styling team made them more interesting by adding some color, a print, and a high-waisted silhouette. The brown and cream-ish color palette looked so nice and it worked perfectly with the cozy vibes the outfits have. At first I thought their outfits were boring because the red carpet official photos are so dark and most colors don't show in the pictures, but then I saw the photo they posted on Twitter and realized that their look is actually really good. 10 out of 10. Next, we have Itzy. They wore black and white dresses, and I actually like that two members are wearing white while the other two are wearing black. The mini dresses all have different silhouettes with almost all of them having some sort of silver rhinestone detail on the bodice. I really like the off-the-shoulder neckline on Yuna's dress, and the feathery hem on Chai Ryong's dress. Ryujin's dress was a bit interesting for me because the silhouette is straight and a big baggy, which could look really bad really easily because in a lot of cases it isn't done in a flattering way, however, the dress being super short actually makes the silhouette work. The girls wore accessories, but they were so simple and I wished they had worn more eye-catching ones, but I do like their heels. 9 out of 10. Next, we have G Idol. The girls wore these really pretty burgundy dresses. They are all completely different, they also match perfectly, and when all the girls were together it looked really nice. I personally love Shuhua's dress the most. The asymmetric high neck is so cool, and the way the dress fits her is perfectly. I also really like Miyeon's because of the rhinestone heart it has on the skirt of the dress. The accessories were also really great. I like Soyeon's furry coat and Yuki's black stockings. I wish they all had more eye-catching jewelry, but it's not that big of a deal because the clothing stands tall on its own. There really isn't a single thing I dislike about this look. Everything was perfectly thought out and executed. The girls looked stunning and each individual look was amazing. Of course, this is a 10 out of 10 for me. Next, we have Yujin from IVE. She was actually hosting the event, so she wore multiple looks throughout the night. The first one we have is this gorgeous black dress. The top half of the dress was made from velvet fabric and I really like the V-neckline. The skirt was really puffy because around the hip or tulle came until the bottom of the dress. I personally don't love the way the skirt of the dress is with the velvet and the tulle mixed in, but objectively the dress is still really pretty. I like that she wore her hair up, the jewelry was simple but it complemented the elegant vibe of the dress, and she looked stunning. 9 out of 10. She then changed and wore this stunning white dress. I love the neckline so much, and the corset bodice looked really nice. The skirt was simple, but I like the draping it has, and the satin fabric makes everything a lot more elegant. The dress actually kind of looks like a wedding dress because of the fabric and color. She once again wore simple jewelry that went perfectly with the elegant look. 10 out of 10. She then changed one more time for this short strapless dress. The base of the dress is a simple red fabric, and the bodice had some pleats made of a sheer tulle fabric. 
That same tulle fell from hips at the sides and around the back as a puffy skirt. This look is cute, but is also the simplest of all, and in my opinion it doesn't stand as tall as the rest. She wore minimal jewelry, but with a dress like that more eye-catching jewelry would have been better. 7 out of 10. Next, we have TXT. The boys wore all black suits. Some of them had white details, like the neck lapels and white shirts underneath the jackets. For the most part the clothing pieces they wore were simple but I like how they paired them in some of their looks. This look isn't bad, but it feels like there's something missing. For an all-black look to really look interesting and unique every single aspect of the look has to be perfect, and in this case it feels like there were some things their styling team didn't account for. They basically didn't wear any accessories, and more of them could have complemented their looks a lot more. As a whole this look is better than the other red carpet looks they've worn recently, but it still isn't as good as it could have been. 8 out of 10. And last, but not least we have NCT. The boys all wore these black and burgundy velvet suits. Some jackets were all in burgundy, some were burgundy with black details, some were black with burgundy details, and some were all black, however they all match. As well, some boys wore burgundy pants while other wore black pants. All of them paired the look with white shirts underneath the jacket and black shoes. Almost all of them had some sort of bow tie, except Ji Sung, who had a tie. The look is pretty basic with nothing groundbreaking, but I find amazing how NCT stylists always find a way to make each individual look different, while all of them still matching. Some members go from unit to unit for the red carpet, so it's always important for all of them to match since they have to pose multiple times with different people and everything has to look cohesive. 8 out of 10. And I didn't rank the outfits because they are so similar. The outfits for the red carpet left me wanting more. Some of them were average, some were so boring, and some were downright bad. There were some looks I did genuinely like, but there were definitely more that I didn't love than ones I did. But at last, the best dressed for the red carpet in my opinion were G-Idol. I love that they aren't wearing black or white, which are the colors artists usually wear for red carpets, and their outfits were just amazing. Each one of the girls looked stunning, and there wasn't a single thing I disliked. The worst dressed is actually a tie between multiple groups. And those are Nmix, and Hypen, and the boys. Nmix wore outfits that didn't look good. Their styling team had a nice concept, but they didn't develop it nicely, and it felt like they didn't take the time to really work on it. And in the case of Nhypen and the boys, their looks were just boring and uninteresting. More of the same classic boy group suit look we always see in red carpets, and I just want something a lot more interesting than that. <laughs> The first artists we're talking about is Espa. The girls performed Miritich by TVXQ at the beginning of the award show. The girls wore all black outfits and looked absolutely amazing. I like that they are all wearing different outfits because it gives variety to the look. I'm obsessed with Ningning's look and with the Y2K vibes she's giving. The lace in the outfits elevate the look so much, and it almost seems like they brought some of the vibes that the drama outfits have into this cover performance. I really like the chunky boots they wore, and although they didn't wore a lot of accessories, they still were great for each member. This is definitely a 10 out of 10 for me. Later in the evening, the girls performed drama. They wore these amazing blue velvet dresses. The outfits had that same cabaret-inspired touch to them that have had most of drama outfits so far, and I love it so much. In this instance the looks were also giving me slight steampunk vibes because of all the layers, ruffles, and chains on the skirts. There's a lot going on in each individual outfit but it doesn't look messy or like it's too much. You can tell that every single aspect was meticulously thought out and planned. The royal blue fabric looked amazing with the stage lights, and it blended perfectly with the black elements in the look. I love that they were all wearing tights, but they were all different. I love that the girls wore accessories in this look, because with the dresses being impactful on their own, other stylists might have decided that just the clothing was enough. I truly love every single aspect of this look, so obviously this is a 10 out of 10. Next, we have Nmix. The girls blew my mind with their performance, however, it unfortunately has nothing to do with their outfits. They killed on stage, but the outfits weren't that amazing. I love the punkish vibe in their looks. It's something they did for the Love Me Like This promotions, and I'm obsessed. The clothing pieces by themselves aren't that amazing, but I really like the layering since it added a lot to the look. The different plaid and striped prints also made the looks more intriguing, and the accessories just tied everything together. My issue is with the color palette. 
I like the color combo, but there's way too much gray in the look, which in turn made the outfits not stand out as much as they should have. I love the vibrant red on Lily's look, and I wished more of the girls had that same shade of red since it popped up really well on camera. My only issue is that, just wanted the looks to be more eye-catching, and it might not seem like a big deal to some people, but I can't wholeheartedly love the whole look. 8 out of 10. Next, we have Boy Next Door. The boys performed one and only, and wore pretty much the same outfits they wore during the promotion period of the song. It's not a bad thing to have the same vibe every time you perform a song, but I don't like it when they don't mix it up. The same school uniform inspired outfits is nice, but for an event like this, I wish they had more colorful clothing, maybe some sequins, or some eye-catching fabrics like velvet or satin. They didn't look bad, and it's not like the clothes were ugly, but the whole thing was so boring and uninteresting. I don't have much else to say except that, so this is a 6 out of 10 for me. Next, we have the performance collab between Yuna from Itzy and Yunjun from TXT. Yuna performed a cover of You and Me by Jenny, and her outfit clearly took inspiration from what Jenny wore when she performed the track. The two-piece set, the ruffle skirt, the leg warmers, and the gloves are all pieces that were very present in Jenny's looks. Yuna looked amazing, there's no denying that, but the outfit was a bit too simple for me. I like that she had accessories, and that everything was cohesive, but there still feels like something's missing. For a big of a performance as this was, I wanted more for her outfit. 8 out of 10. Yunjun performed a cover of 3D by Youngkook. At first I actually thought that his look was simple, but when I actually watched the performance, I realized that the bottom half of his look is really cool. She wore some baggy ripped gray jeans with a black belt, but the real kicker is the black skirt he had on top. It definitely made the look more interesting, and he looked amazing. The burgundy jacket is very reminiscent of what Youngkook wore in the 3D MV, but I would have looked better in a more vibrant color. I also think they could have elevated the look with a printed t-shirt, instead of a plain white one, but as a whole the look wasn't bad. 9 out of 10. Next, we have Rise. You might have noticed that I didn't talk about the boys in the red carpet section, and that was because they wore the same thing for the red carpet in their performance. I don't love when artists do this, because I want different outfits to appreciate, but I totally get that this way is more comfortable for them because they don't have to run around changing, especially if they have to do it multiple times in the night. The boys wore these red and black outfits. The look is giving me Christmas dinner vibes, which is very fitting for the event. I like that all of their jackets are different, and I especially like the striped ones. Shitaro and Anton wore black gloves, which added a nice touch to their looks. The boys looked great, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with their outfits, like literally nothing, but at the same time, it's not a look that I absolutely love. It's just fine, not bad, but also not amazing. It served its purpose, but I wanted something more amazing for the boys. 9 out of 10. Next, we have Stacy. The girls wore this madness of plaids that I absolutely love. The different plaid prints if not done right would have looked so bad, but their styling team did a wonderful job. The main color palette been really cohesive between red, white, and black helped a lot to make the outfits really cohesive. I love the different hair accessories and hairstyles, especially Seyun's. The little reindeer and snowman in Jay and Yoon's outfits were so cute, and I know that a lot of people might not even care but I loved it. Sian is the one that caught my attention the most, and is not really because of her outfit, although I did love it, especially when she had the fur coat on. But it was actually her black hair that shocked me. I was so used to seeing her blonde, but this new look is giving female fatale vibes and I'm all here for it. This look is a 10 out of 10 for me. Next, we have NCT127. The first performance the boys did was Be There For Me. This is a Christmas song, so of course the outfits have to be Christmas coded, and they didn't disappoint. The red, black and white color combo is perfect for this time of year, and mixed in with the plaid pants, everything looked amazing. I like that the boys all are wearing suits, but they are all different. It give variety to the look while still looking cohesive. The accessories were basically non-existent, but in a look like this it doesn't really bother me because the clothes are enough on its own. Totally 10 out of 10. Later in the night the boys performed again. For this performance they wore some very NCT 127 coated outfits. 
The look had this Hanbo-inspired clothing pieces that mixed in with more modern clothing pieces looked really nice and it worked perfectly with the songs they performed. The color palette for the outfits was really nice, and that blue-greenish shade popped off really well on camera. I didn't love the silver bits on their pants but it's because the fabric looked a bit cheap and custom white, however, that's just me being picky. The outfits are clearly custom made, and I love how busy they are. The different layers, with the colors mixed in, and the bunch of studs their outfits had elevated the look so much. The accessories consisted in only silver chains and rings, but I don't mind it since the clothes are enough on their own. This is definitely how you do a performance look, so of course this is 10 out of 10. Next, we have new jeans. I always look forward to whatever they do because their fashion is always on point, however, I was so disappointed by the outfits they wore for their performance. The girls wore these light pink jerseys with pleated gray skirts, socks and black shoes. They didn't look bad, but the outfit was so simple. The pink and gray color combo isn't bad, but it isn't vibrant enough to really pop off on camera. Maybe if the jerseys were hot pink it could have been better, but I don't know. Although I do like that the jerseys have some shiny studs in them and some pretty embroidery on the sleeves. I don't like when all the members in a group wear the exact same clothes, so that's another thing I didn't like about this look. The only thing that differentiates the looks are the numbers and names on their jerseys, aside that, there isn't much variety in their outfits. One thing I do appreciate, however, is that their accessory game was as good as ever. I really like the different jewelry and hairstyles they wore. As a whole I do like some aspects of the look, but for me it wasn't up to part with some other looks new jeans have worn, so unfortunately this is 7 out of 10. Next, we have NCTU with baggy jeans. The boys wore these amazing nude printed shirts that give the illusion that they are shirtless and have a bunch of tattoos. They paired them with, of course, some baggy black jeans, and these really cool furry black and white jackets. The jackets were so eye-catching, not only because of the fabric, but also because of all the rhinestones they had. The accessories were really nice. The jewelry, like chains, rings and bracelets, was good, but the thing I loved the most were the belts they wore. Each member had at least two of them, and it might seem like such a dumb detail to some people, but I personally love it. The boys wore basically the same thing they wore during the promotion period, but make it sparkly. I honestly don't complain because their stylists managed to find the perfect balance between keeping the core elements of an era while still making the outfits more grandiose for a performance like this one. 10 out of 10. Next, we have NCT Dream. Right after finishing up baggy jeans, Mark took off his furry jacket and switched it for a leather one in black, white and blue. I honestly think it's amazing that he performed back to back, and their styling team did an amazing job at making the NCTU and NCT Dream outfits blend so Mark only had to change the jacket and then seamlessly look like the rest of his members. All the members wore different versions of the same black, white and blue jacket, some being in leather, some in velvet. I really like how the design is different but they still all match, and I absolutely love all the studs the jackets had. It made the jackets more unique and interesting, which is nice since they are the main part of the look. The boys paired the jackets with white shirts and black pants, some were in leather, some had studs in them, and most of them weren't plain black trousers, which I totally appreciate. The accessories were really amazing, which only helped to elevate the look even further. I like the jewelry, the ties with studs and rhinestones, the leather gloves, and the different little elements they had underneath the jacket, like mesh tops, buckle details, and chest harnesses. As whole their outfits were really amazing and I liked the so much, so this is a 10 out of 10 for me. Next, we have From Us 9, and oh my god, when I first saw their outfits I literally gasped because of how amazing they were. The girls performed a tango song for their intro and that's why their outfits are like this. They are very tango clothing inspired, and I love it so much. The red and black color combo is classic but so nice. I loved all the different ruffles and tools their skirts had. It added so much to the look, and was a nice contrast to their much simpler red tops. The accessories were nice since they were present, but they didn't distract from the clothes. I really like the different black boots all of them are wearing, especially the ones with heels since it adds to the tango concept. The girls performed attitude, and for that part of the performance they took the skirts and revealed that they were wearing mini dresses underneath. I literally gasped because I wasn't expecting that at all. I kind of wish they had worn the skirts for the whole performance, but this reveal was also so freaking good. 
Absolutely, without a single doubt, this is a 10 out of 10. Next, we have Les Seraphim. The girls performed in these all-white outfits. At first they were giving me kind of impurities vibes, but after catching all the details of the look I realized that it was only because of the all-white clothes. I like how the clothing pieces the girls wore are quite interesting and unique on their own, which is why when they come all together it looked even more amazing. I love the asymmetric bodysuits in Yunjin and Sakura's outfits, and I also love the long skirts Chewan and Kazuha's outfits so much. The girls wore silver accessories that looked really nice, but the look would have been better for me if they had more shiny silver elements in their looks. For the latter half of the performance the girls wore these small red and white capes that are like Mrs. Claw's outfit. I didn't love them because they don't really match the vibes of their outfits, but I get that they are cute and work for the Christmas version of the song they performed. But as a whole, these outfits are a 9 out of 10 for me. Next, we Ive. I didn't mention them in the red carpet section because the girls wore the same outfits for the red carpet in their performance, except Eugen since she was hosting the event. The girls wore these all tweed outfits, and they were giving major Chanel vibes. The color palette was mostly white, which could have been so boring, but the each outfit had so many elements that blended perfectly, and resulted in these amazing outfit. I personally love the lace and sheer fabric on the sleeves of some outfits, it adds so much and it looked beautiful. Each piece had a lot going on in terms of craftsmanship. You can tell that the people who made them spent hours on each individual pieces, and as someone who also makes clothes as a living, well-made pieces are always appreciated. I love that each girl had different hairstyles with different hair accessories. The outfits were a lot by themselves, and could have worked with zero accessories, but I love how their stylists still gave the girls jewelry that complemented each outfit. These type of outfits is something that has been done before, which means that there isn't anything innovative about them, but I still think that they are amazing and worked perfectly for the type of performance they did. The girls wore the same look throughout the whole night, and I like when the artists wear something different for the red carpet, however, I totally get how this is more comfortable for them. 10 out of 10. Next, we have Itzy. The girls wore these white and red outfits, and although they did look good, I don't love them. I really like the color palette for the look. It's a color combo that is always going to look good, and it went perfectly with the Christmas time. I also like that there are different fabric textures in the look since it makes it more interesting. But aside that, there isn't anything else I genuinely like about the look. All of their outfits feel bland because there isn't anything eye-catching or interesting in them. Most of the clothing pieces they wore are so boring, and something that would have looked so good five years ago. I especially think that Ryujin's outfit looks like something she already wore during Mafia in the morning era, and that's not good. Some outfits were also so simple, like way too simple. The girls did have accessories, but not even that elevated the look that much. A little bit of print would have worked amazingly in this look, better accessories, and different hairstyles. I don't love this look, but also Itzy isn't a group that stands out in their fashion. The main element of their performances isn't the outfits, and that's not a bad thing, but personally for me, the outfits are super important because they make the performance much more interesting. 6 out of 10. Next, we have 80s. Their performance had this space theme, and that was reflected on the outfits. The boys wore these mostly white outfits with some silver elements here and there. The color palette is pretty basic, but their styling team killed the look by playing with layering and choosing interesting clothing pieces. The silver pieces were also in shiny fabrics, which added an interesting texture to the look. The puffer vest and jackets also add to make the look more interesting in terms of silhouette. The accessories also didn't disappoint one bit. Not only the jewelry usage was so nice, but their stylists really took advantage of every single thing, and I especially love how some of them have double belts in their looks. But everything was perfect, the gloves, the glasses and the goggles. I'm also completely obsessed with Seong Hwa's bunny ears. Of course 10 out of 10. Next, we have G Idol. The girls wore these amazing Mrs. Claus inspired outfits that were so freaking cute. The silhouette of the clothing pieces were so nice, and of course the fury white on the neckline and the hem was so cute, but the best part is the fact that the red fabric had sequins in them and it shined so pretty while they were performing. The thing that I don't love is the black gloves because it doesn't match the red and white of the clothing that well, however it does match the black boots. 
I personally would have made them wear white gloves and white boots instead, but it is what it is. The accessories were on point, they weren't too much or too little for the outfit, just the perfect amount. The outfits also have a touch of sexiness without being sexual that I personally love so much. The girls looked stunning, and I think it was a crime for their performance to be so short. I needed more of them, and those outfits needed more time to shine. For sure 10 out of 10. As a whole, the outfits for the performances were better, which makes total sense since for any performance the outfits tend to be more eye-catching and elaborate. There were multiple looks that I loved and that received a 10 out of 10, which is why it was a bit tricky to choose only one best dressed, but at last I did. For me From Us 9 took the cake. The outfits were stunning, I loved the concept behind them, and my jaw literally dropped when they took off the skirts. I want a lot more of the From Us 9 we saw with this performance, and I want the rest of the industry to take some notes from them. Also, if you don't stand From Us 9 by now, please go check them out, they are so talented and you ones regret it. Now, for worst dressed I wouldn't say they looked awful, but it was more that their outfits were quite disappointing. It's a tie between Boy Next Door and Itzy. Boy Next Door had way too simple outfits, there was nothing eye-catching on them, and it was so uninteresting for a performance like this one. Itzy, on the other hand, was just boring. There wasn't anything exciting about their looks, and most of the outfits were considered amazing in 2018, which isn't good at all. None of the members in both groups look bad, but it was just that there wasn't a single memorable thing in their looks. That was everything for the video and if you made it up to this point, you are amazing. I really hope you enjoyed it and let me know in the comments if you agree with my opinions, and who was your best and worst dressed. 2023 has come to an end, I hope you had a good year and I wish that 2024 is even better for all of you. I'm going to post a video talking about the 2023 MBC Gayo outfits, so be on the lookout for that. I will also be posting my 2023 wrapped videos where I talk about my 2023 favorite songs, moments, and more. If you want to see that, don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up when I post. If you want to see more of me, follow me in my Instagram account. I post K-pop fashion related content and do some games on my stories with outfits idols have worn. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.